hopefully you're not overwhelmed. We're gonna be going over all these tools and panels over and over and over again as we work on projects throughout the course. You're gonna, uh, don't feel like you have to master each thing I go over here in a minute. Um, just take your time and we're gonna go over it. I'm gonna repeat a lot of things just to kind of um, be able to help you slowly move through everything and learn it. So what I've done is I've developed something a little bit new to teach Photoshop. I have not taught Photoshop this way before, but I do teach Adobe Illustrator, which is the next software we're gonna learn using a worksheet where we're going to have certain shapes we're gonna recreate. Uh, we're gonna recreate lots of different things using this worksheet. It's a great practice test run so that you can do everything along with me and you can feel like you can do it step by step. So I developed this Photoshop document. You can download it right here in the Photoshop section or the Photoshop folder of the downloadable resources and you'll be able to open it up and see what you're seeing right now. I've opened up the Photoshop student worksheet.psd and PSD is the file name that is used for any Photoshop file. So go ahead and double click that, open it up. We're gonna start in the upper left-hand corner and slowly work our way through the document. So I wanna zoom in. There's no way I can read some of this text. I really wanna zoom in. I have a, a laptop that has a trackpad that I can take my two fingers and easily zoom in and out. But some of you guys don't have trackpads, but if you do have a trackpad, you can zoom in and out by pinching your two fingers in and out. It's very helpful. But if you just have a mouse and keyboard, you can always go right down here to this section where you can manually type in um, and zoom in. So right now it's at 54% view. If I were to type in 100%, this would show 100% view of the document. This is just like Microsoft Word and other programs. I think 100% works really well. What's great about this bottom area is you can see the document size as well. If you look down here, it's a 4,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels document at a 300 resolution. So it's kind of nice to be able to glance and see how big a photo is when you open it when you look down in this area. So now that I have it typed in, just typed in 100 and press enter, I was able to zoom in. So let's go ahead and start. I'm just going to go all the way up to the top. You can either, I'm using my trackpad to kind of move around. But if you just had a mouse and a keyboard, you can just slide this up and down or slide this across to be able to kind of find and orient your position in the document. So using basic shape tools. So I'm gonna to go to our toolbar for this. We're gonna go all the way down here. You see a little kind of a square. You're gonna go ahead and click anything that has this little triangle at the bottom right. You're gonna go ahead and click and hold and you're gonna get a drop down menu. You're gonna get more menu options. And we're going to go all the way down to the ellipse tool and this is how you're going to be able to create circles so i have the ellipse tool circled and some students i've noticed have problems with certain tools not showing up on their toolbar if you ever have this issue go down to these three little dots right down here at the bottom says edit toolbar and hold and just do edit toolbar it's going to have this extra drop down menu and you can restore defaults if you want to restore to the default. Somehow you accidentally moved a tool or a tool got off the toolbar and got deleted. You can just restore uh, your defaults. So with our circle tool selected, I wanna make an imperfect oval. So that's gonna be easy. I'm just gonna click and drag and try to match this shape. So I'm gonna click somewhere up here, click and drag, and I'm gonna be able to make an imperfect oval. And I could take these transform controls and bring it down if I want to make it match that gray area perfectly. So let's kind of make it match, kind of make sure everything is over that gray area. So we were able to recreate that simple oval. So let's say I want to move this object around. So we're going to get what's called the move tool, which is right up here. And there is a keyboard shortcut for this, which is V that you can press. But I like to kind of go up here when I'm first learning and click on the tool manually. So I, cl I clicked on the move tool and now I can click on my object and I can move it around anywhere I want, just clicking on the move tool. And what I want to do is I want to be able to see, I want to be able to transform this oval. Maybe I want to make it a little bit longer. I just want to change the shape. How do I do that? I'm not seeing any kind of transform controls. 
So by default, Photoshop usually has us unchecked, but I love to be able to check it because it helps me out so much to be able to transform my shapes. So go up to the top and click on Show Transform Controls. Now all of a sudden you'll have this box with these little anchor points on it. And it's going to give us a chance to be able to change and scale our object easier. It's also, if I go to the corners, I can also rotate it as well. So just make sure when you have the Move tool selected that you have Show Transform Controls checked. This is going to help us when we want to make objects bigger to match the gray areas. So we have a layer here. If you go down into our layer system, I'm going to go ahead and bring this out. This is what we have here. If you ever want to know what is on your layer, I like to toggle visibility on and off. See this little eyeball icon? If you click it on and off, you'll be able to kind of see what's on your layer. So I'm going to have that toggle back on, and I'm going to call this oval. It's really nice to be able to name your layer so you don't get lost. So that is my oval layer. So what I want to do, if I want to create the next shape, I want to be able to create a new layer so that I can move these independently. If I didn't, let's say I went ahead and I wanted to create this next circle and I create it, they're on the same layer now. So now if I take the move tool, they're like connected and I can't really move them independently and I want to be able to do that. So let's create a fresh new layer. So I'm going to go down here to create a new layer. It's going to be a little addition sign. So create a new layer and we're going to call this circle. And now we can get our ellipse tool and be able to create a simple circle. But I want the circle to be perfect, not imperfect. So there's a little trick. So let's say I, I don't do the trick and I just try to match this circle. Well, I can get kind of close, but it's not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift key, click and drag. And when I hold down shift and drag, it's going to be able to scale it dimensionally. And we'll do this a lot in Adobe Illustrator as well but we're going to be able to scale this dimensionally and click on it. So let's say I want to be able to match it perfectly. What I can do is I can make this a little bit opaque or transparent so I can see what's going on behind the shape. I'm going to go down, I'm still in my layers panel, I'm going to go to opacity and I'm just going to reduce this a little bit so I can kind of see what's underneath. It's going to let everything underneath through because this is now transparent. So I'm going to take my Move tool, or I can press V on my keyboard, and I can move and match it. And if I need to scale it, I can use my Transform Controls right here and be able to match it perfectly. Now I can go back and I can increase my opacity to full black. So we have two independent layers. We have a circle layer. We have an oval layer. So I want to move my oval. I will highlight my oval, get my Move tool. I can move him independently. I can select my circle. I can move him independently. And this is how layers work. And getting really comfortable with layers is something we're going to do. We're going to be creating projects that have 20 or more layers. So we're really going to get to practice layers a lot. But I find that put, having as many different layers uh, helps with the flexibility. If I had these two connected, and, and let's say I just had these two layers connected, you know, I wouldn't be able to have as much freedom and overlapping and creating designs and creating artwork. So when in doubt, create a new layer. It always helps to have, you know, everything on different layers to be able to move things around with more freedom.